I wish I was here announcing that 115 days after the Democratic-led House passed universal background checks, something I strongly support, that the Republican-led Senate would finally hold a vote on gun safety legislation. That's how democracy is supposed to work. When poll after poll shows that the vast majority of Americans support universal background checks, both chambers of Congress should act. But that's not what's happening in Washington today. Too many lawmakers still fear the NRA. In 115 days that Senate Republicans have sat on the House passed legislation, an estimated 11,500 more Americans have died of gunshot wounds. Look, I'm not saying that any single piece of legislation can stop every single tragedy, but there's no question that gun safety laws can save lives. That's why I'm here today introducing new legislation to make gun silencers, also known as suppressors, illegal nationwide, just as they are in New Jersey. We were reminded how dangerous silencers can be a few weeks ago when a gunman used a 45 caliber handgun fitted with a suppressor to kill 12 Americans in Virginia Beach. What first sounded like a nail gun ended up being gunfire. The words of one survivor say it all. If it was a regular gunshot, we would have definitely known a lot sooner. Even if we couldn't have had, uh, even if we would have had 30 or 60 seconds more, she said, all of us could have barricaded ourselves in. Just imagine how many families might still be whole if everyone immediately recognized the, sun, uh, the sound of gunfire. And likewise, imagine how many more people would have been lost if the students in Parkland or the Jewish worshipers in Poway didn't hear the assailant coming. Virginia Beach isn't the first time that gun silencers have made news. In 2011, an Ohio man shot a co-worker in an office, and believe it or not, no one even noticed. His colleagues initially thought he had a heart attack. Law enforcement later surmised he was shot by someone using a silencer. In 2013, a former Los Angeles police officer killed four people and wounded three others in the span of nine days. Investigators later determined the shootings went unreported simply because no one heard them. The NRA wants you to believe that silencers are necessary to protect the hearing of gun owners. But not even the United States military relies on silencers to protect our soldiers' hearing. Our military reserves silencers for stealth operations, like when SEAL Team 6 crept into the compound of Osama bin Laden. So if traditional hearing protection is good enough for the ears of American soldiers in combat abroad, I say it's good enough to protect recreational gun owners here at home. It's time to set aside the gun lobby spin and NRA talking points, because here's the truth. For those in the business of making and selling guns and accessories, silencers are a growing moneymaker. Back in 2010, there were just over 285,000 registered silencers in the, excuse me, in the United States. As of February of 2018, eight years later, there were nearly 1.5 million silencers. We know because current law requires all silencers to be registered. It's unconscionable that despite opposition from many law enforcement groups, some far-right legislators continue to propose loosening regulations on silencers. Silencers undermine public safety. They undermine the ability of law enforcement to do their jobs, and they undermine the ability of Americans in the midst of mass shootings to survive. Now, New Jersey has some of the toughest gun laws in the nation, and it's no coincidence that we have one of the lowest rates of gun deaths in the nation. But as the mayor can tell you, Chief Coley and others, uh, you know, that there isn't a moment, sometime, someplace, somewhere in our state or in our nation, 
that doesn't involve firearms legally licensed in illegally licensed in New Jersey, uh, but guns trafficked in from states with laxer gun laws like Pennsylvania or Virginia. That's why even with silencers banned in New Jersey, our officers continue to confiscate these tools of death across our state. Clearly, we need a national response. That's why today I am announcing legislation, the Help Empower Americans to Respond Act, or the HEAR Act. Barring some exceptions for current and former law enforcement, the HEAR Act would prohibit the sale, transfer, production, and possession of gun silencers. Using burn JAG grants, my bill authorizes a buyback program for silencers and gives individuals 90 days to comply. The courts largely agree that gun silences have little to do with the Second Amendment. Just this month, the Supreme Court of the United States refused to hear a challenge against a lower court ruling that upheld silencer regulations because they are not, and I quote, bearable arms, according to the court. This same legislation is being introduced in the House of Representatives by Congresswoman uh, Bonnie Watson Coleman, and I appreciate her uh, leadership in the House on this issue. Think about what happens if you hear a gun go off in your street, at your school, church, or anywhere else. The sound of gunshots is what tells you that something is wrong. It's not a nail gun. It's not fireworks. It's not just another drill. The sound of gunshots is what tells you that your life is in danger and that it's time to run, to hide, to take cover, to call the police and help others save themselves. At the end of the day, if you can hear a weapon, you just might save a life. The NRA may be willing to prop up the gun industry no matter the human cost, but not me. No one needs a silencer to defend themselves or their home, but everyone needs to be able to hear when their lives are in danger. And that's why I'm introducing the HEAR Act.